So we flew over five hours, over 3,000 kilometers, Vancouver to Toronto, and we're going to Niagara Falls. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. We got a bunch of things to see, and we'll see how it goes. All right, so our first stop, just to drive outside Niagara Falls is the Screaming Tunnel, check it out. I read some stories online that were really cool saying it was haunted and everything like that. And it was right off the road here, highway. So I uh, had to check it out. Pretty neat, super easy to get to. You can park right beside it. And this is like a pretty old ancient tunnel. Some crazy, freaky, scary stories about it too, so. Yeah, we're gonna continue on, but here's a screaming tunnel. Okay, so I looked more into the history of the screaming tunnel now that I'm back at home, and it's pretty gruesome. Basically, it all leads to a young girl who was burned and died in this tunnel. Anyways, on our first night in Niagara Falls, we had a few things planned. But we went a little off script, drove around, explored the area, and eventually found ourselves in Niagara on the lake. I had a few people recommending this charming town, and it didn't disappoint. Although we never did explore the area, we just drove through it. We just really wanted to get to Niagara Falls and check into our hotel. But, of course, we had to drive around and explore the area a little bit. This was our first glimpse of Niagara Falls. By the time we checked into our hotel, we were tired and jet lagged, so we didn't do a whole lot of exploring, except for going to the Falls View Casino and Resort. <laughs> it has high-end retail stores, a 24-hour casino, but for us, most importantly, had a 24-hour food court. Okay, so it's our first full day here in Niagara Falls, Canada. Um, I think we're gonna make this video a little bit different, just things to do in Niagara Falls, and uh, we'll try to make it really quick and fast. So one of the first things we noticed while walking around Niagara Falls was there's a lot of IHOPs. IHOP over here, IHOP over there. <laughs> Seriously, within a few blocks of our hotel, there had to be at least half a dozen. So yeah, it's got to be on this list. Get yourself a Grand Slam. <laughs> oh, and also while walking to the falls, we passed by this sign. It totally brought up childhood memories of everyone loves Marineland. <laughs> Alright, so our first stop here is the Incline Railway. Okay, so our hotel was two blocks from Niagara Falls, but to get there, the easiest way is to ride the Falls Incline Railway. It's cheap, convenient, and as you can see, gives some pretty impressive views of Niagara Falls. But... Alright, so the Incline Rail wasn't working, so we're gonna walk down this uh, beautiful view. Viewpoint Road. Okay, so first off, that's the Skyland Tower there off in the distance. We never did end up going up there, but it's a restaurant and observation deck where you can apparently see as far as the Toronto and Buffalo skyline. Now, because the Incline Railway wasn't operating, or if you're just thrifty, <laughs> you can walk the Falls Scenic View Trail. The views of Niagara Falls is, are a little hidden, but it's an alternative way to get to Niagara Falls from where we were. Took us about 15 minutes. Alright, so if you're in Niagara Falls, you really gotta check out the falls. There's a little walkway right beside it. Canadian side, US side right there. Views of everything. So here it is. Our first real glimpse of Niagara Falls. This is Niagara Falls from Murray Street. Mm -hmm. 
now on our walk to the bottom of the Falls Incline Rail Station. Yes, we're still trying to get there. We passed by the Nikola Tesla statue. So that's it, the Nikola Tesla statue. We're we'll continue the walk. So when visiting Niagara Falls in Ontario, Canada, you're gonna end up here at one point. The Falls Welcome Center or Table Rock Center at the bottom of the Falls Incline Rail System. Here they have food, tours, washrooms, exhibits worth exploring. All right, then they have both Niagara Fury and uh, Beneath the Falls here. So I think we'll try both of them since we paid for both of them. <laughs> we ended up buying group tickets here for a few Niagara Parks attractions, but you can probably do it online too. We first seen Niagara Fury. A complete experience that retells the story of how Niagara Falls was created along with a fully immersive show. The entire experience lasted less than a half an hour. Were you scared? I was scared a little bit. <laughs> I was, but they kept saying you were going to get wet. They gave you a poncho and everything. You weren't too sure what to expect. Yep, it was fun. Also, when we were at the Welcome Center or Table Rock Center, you are definitely going to have to check out the views of Niagara Falls from here. You literally stand over the falls. Seriously, you're maybe five feet away from the cliff. It's pretty surreal. Okay, so for this next experience, I was super stoked to be doing this when I heard about it. This is Journey Beneath the Falls. They actually take you right behind and beside the waterfall. Ah! <laughs> Check that out. Woo. You get incredibly close to the falls and the minute you walk out, you can feel the power from Niagara Falls. This is an experience you're gonna wanna do if you're visiting. Beside that, there's actually tunnels that lead you out a fair distance behind the falls. You're literally standing behind the waterfall. It's pretty neat taking in the power of the waterfall in Niagara Falls. Alright, so our next stop, the Whitewater Walk. So next we hopped a bus and ended up here at the White Water Walk. It's a part of the Niagara Parks package deal we picked up where they let you take a self-guided tour right beside these class six rapids. It's pretty intense, it's a short walk where it only took us about 20, 30 minutes to do. The Whirlpool Aero Cars, you getting scared? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> I wonder if you can see through the bottom. Um, your life before you. <laughs> <laughs> Along with our Niagara Parks package deal, we got to experience the Whirlpool area car. This one kilometer journey over the Niagara River will leave you memorized. So next on our list is the Butterfly Conservatory. Check this building out. Look at that, looks pretty neat. Okay, so the Butterfly Conservatory was better than I expected. This attraction features over 2,000 tropical butterflies freely roaming in this lush greenery with winding walking paths throughout this rainforest. Who's the butterfly whisperer now? I am. <laughs> Can you take a picture of me? We ended up spending quite a bit of time here longer than we had anticipated and had a blast. You're not the only butterfly with Aw, you scared him. <laughs> what the heck? Okay, so if you're in the Niagara region, you are gonna have to hit up at least one winery. We aren't familiar with the wines in the area, so we randomly selected Queenston Mile Vineyard. It looked like they had a pretty cool patio, but we were here for the wine tasting. Okay, so the tourist trap of Niagara Falls is Clifton Hill. Mm -hmm. 
we had never really been here so we fell for it pretty hard <laughs> it's just fun for everybody there's a ton of stuff to do in the clifton hill area so i'll list these off quickly but they have an iconic sky wheel overlooking niagara falls which i kind of wish i did just for the experience they've also got rock and roll bowling lots of arcades Haunted houses, more casinos, movie land, wax museum of the stars. <laughs> this one I wish I visited. Hershey's Chocolate World, Negra Brewing, Laser Tag, Mirror Maze, and Laser Maze. No idea what the difference is between them, but yeah. Wizards Mini Golf, Ripley's, believe it or not. This one actually has some pretty high reviews online. The House of Frankenstein. The Crystal Caves. Comedy Clubs. Mystery Maze. I'm sure the mystery will be over by the time you make it here, but yeah. The Upside Down House. It's exactly what it sounds like. Louis Tazar's Waxworks. I assume he's well known in the wax museum world. Negra Speedway. This one would have been fun, but probably super expensive. Zombie Attack. Another wax museum. I have no idea how they survive. They've got the club. Oh, I actually hear this place is super scary. Nightmares Fear Factory. Alright, so we're gonna do it. Dino golfing. <laughs> Okay, this was the main reason we made it down to Clifton Hill in Niagara Falls. I had seen this and I just had to play it. It's definitely expensive being over $10 per adult, but going late at night, we had a lot of time to play the entire thing and we end up spending over an hour here. So we got a picture of a couple dinosaurs here fighting and a poor little guy down below reminds me of you, me, and Koda. <laughs> Look at them fighting. <laughs> now, the videos might not be that great because it was dark, but every night there's a light show on Niagara Falls. They sort of just illuminate it, but it's fun to watch, and they seem to do fireworks over the falls fairly often, but we miss them. All right, so it's our final day in Niagara Falls. Gotta go see it one more time. So if you're going to Niagara Falls in Ontario, Canada, you should really drive the historic Niagara Parkway. It winds along the Niagara River, passing by some awesome viewpoints, trails and historic sites. Okay, so our next stop along the Niagara Parkway is the floral clock right there. Obviously, it's not set up yet. Unfortunately, it's just not that time of year, but uh, good stop. Too bad the floral clock wasn't set up yet. It looked like it would have made for some awesome pictures, but we continued our drive along the Niagara Parkway where we stopped at the Brock's Monument. It was actually created sometime between 1853 and 1856. It overlooks the Niagara River and it's over 185 feet tall. It was way bigger than I had anticipated. We passed by a few historic sites I know nothing about. Laura's Second Homestead, the Tiny Chapel, and Fort George National Historic Site. It would have been neat to explore this. I think they actually reenact the War of 1812. All right, so we're back at Niagara on the lake. We gotta walk around. This town's just too beautiful. We came late at night and we were tired, so we're gonna walk around. Okay, so after finally truly exploring Niagara on the lake, I can comfortably say that there's a lot of high-end retail stores, very funky shops, a lot of local small businesses, and just a very charming feel overall. While in Niagara on the Lakes, 
we found ourselves here at Queens Royal Park. It's right at the end of the Niagara River as it leads into Lake Ontario and it overlooks Fort Niagara on the American side. It's pretty crazy to see just how close it is. All right, so that was our first 48 hours in Niagara Falls. I don't actually know how many things there is to do in Niagara Falls. I'll have to calculate at the end of this video. There were more, I didn't get everything. Uh, leave it in the comment section below, whatever I missed. And we're going straight off somewhere after this, up a little north in Ontario to uh, episode two, Bruce's Peninsula.